It is with great excitement today on behalf of the Docs at Our Leadership that we welcome you at our birthday celebration. Come and join us as we look back to what God has done and we give all of our attention to His Word and His vision for us for the future. Christ within us We won't give up Till every heart is yours Every knee will bow with reverence we we'll lift our hands to you surrender We won't give up Till every heart is yours Nations rise Yes, Lord Jesus Christ, we honor you as Lord of our lives and as the Lord of this ministry. Amen. Amen. It's such an honor now to present to you a report about the season of acceleration and what God has done through the Doxado ministry in these last five years. Imagine being part of a dream aligned with God's heart. Imagine Christ in us restoring wholeness to every city, transforming it into a place which flourishes on every level. 
Imagine extraordinary leaders taking up ownership, walking in faith, working in unity, extravagantly operating in their gifting and calling, boldly transforming all spheres of society, preaching the gospel, glorifying Jesus, freely expressing and worshipping God, loving, discipling and teaching city changers in every generation. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Imagination is trumped by the revelation of the victory we have in Christ. Our identity changed forever because of the completed work on the cross. And then, imagination is upstaged by the unveiling of His truth and His mission, proclaiming the gospel in season, from one city to multiple global cities, from one campus to 19 campuses during the first 20 years as well as our other ministry units established. During 2016, we planted Littleton, Parkview and Wonderboom campus, as well as established the Stadt Reformer in Germany. In 2017, we saw Halderberg, Artuo and Doxodeo Community Church, London come to life. Our new worship and arts movement, Revelation Enterprises, gained momentum. London Food and Fuel Bank was created and demonstrated hope and restoration in a global city. We also planted another pop-up in Nelson Mandela Bay. In 2018 we planted Volgejevel, Skumansville and Bloemfontein Central Campus and Doxideo Media, Lifework Leadership as well as CCMP in Cape Town, CCM's First Steps in Zambia and Key Connection augmented into entities, ministries and SMUs. During 2019, Durbanville and Roslo English campuses launched and we saw a new focus on the acceleration of different English expressions. Our first consulting company, CCI Professional, was birthed and Lifework Leadership, our training program for societal leaders, saw expansion into Orlando, Miami, Fort Lauderdale and Jacksonville in the United States. And we saw the establishment of pop-up in Johannesburg and Bloemfontein. The first Doxadeo album in 15 years titled Complete was launched in October of that year. In 2020, his promise of divine acceleration could not be locked down and during 2020 we saw Doxadeo Marathon Club as well as the Cycling Club moving into the fast lane. We took ownership of a children's home in Bloemfontein and Wilgejewel. Stellenbosch Campus and Hatfield Campus and Doxadeo Online were launched. Pop-Up planted another branch in Cape Town. LifeWork Leadership is now also growing in Nelson Mandela Bay and CCEP in Port Elizabeth. We saw our income grow with 42% and our Sunday attendance grow with 23% in the last five years. CCMP grew from three learning centers to more than 200 students at seven learning centers. This year, we will also be expanding to an online learning engagement. We celebrate His victory, His divine acceleration. We celebrate the multiplication of city changes. We celebrate cities with accelerated global impact. We celebrate 25 years of His mercy, grace and redemption poured out over us. We sing a symphony of praise to Him for all He has done in and through us going so far beyond anything we could ever imagine. The doxa of Deo, the glory of God, transforming our cities into places where God reigns. Knowing God, loving people, impacting my world. Well, happy birthday, Doxa Deo. Uh, 25 years of... Uh, just experiencing the goodness and the, the love and the acceptance of God in our lives and where we could become to others instruments of grace. Uh, some of you have journeyed with us for 25 years and maybe even longer, uh, but it's wonderful for every partner that has become part of this ministry and no matter where you intersected in the journey, 
today is a moment for us to just recognize God has been good. 25 years, that's a quarter of a century. <laughs> uh, we have journeyed and just experienced God's goodness on this ministry. And, uh, you know, as you come to these moments of uh, celebration, they also become moments of reflection and positioning for what you anticipate in the future. And as we, uh, as a leadership, uh, just navigated some of the dialogue, thinking how will we posture ourselves for that which lies ahead, uh, the vision that burns in our heart and what can we anticipate and expect of the future we were actually deeply challenged to consider what has happened not only through us but in us as we have navigated the last 25 years you know, when God takes you on a journey and He wants to give you a promised land, he, he gives you something that you have a vision for, He's also busy working in you on the way there. It's interesting when you see the Israelites leaving Egypt on their way to the promised land. A good GPS will tell you they could have done that trip in seven days but God says no it's not just that I want to take you to inherit the promised land I want to form in you so that you could become my people and it's this principle that captured our hearts and and so as we were gearing up for this moment we about two years ago, started asking the question, who have we become? What did God form in us in the last 25 years? And we identified eight key moments in our journey that became defining references to help us to better understand who we truly are and, and also to, you know, establish that in the hearts of everyone as we position ourselves for the next season, but also the next generations. That they would never lose sight of, of what God has formed in us as a ministry and that they could carry that, giving new expression, different ways of uh, engaging but not losing the essence of what we have learned and what God established in us. And if we look at these eight key moments as signposts, uh, I quickly just want to make you aware of them. Uh, there is a whole communications process around this where there's a video on every moment and there's a booklet and I trust that all of the leaders in Doxadeo, be it full-time and, and part-time uh, as partners who are engaged, uh, together with every partner, would have the, the insight into these eight key references. And of course, uh, being who I am, if you've journeyed with us for many years, you will know that all of these moments now have to start with the same letter. So they're all starting with the letter M. The first one is basically mission. And so many of you know that there was a moment in 1994 where we were in the corner room, the Hooksall of the Brooklyn campus. And we had this moment as a leadership together, experiencing God saying He's not just giving us faith for a church, but He's giving us faith for a city. And that's where our our vision to see cities transformed was birthed. That is a key moment. We never want to lose that. It was not long after that that we were praying about strategy. And God gave us a model. That's the second 
key moment where we recognize that if we could have our presence in different places in the city as in campuses, ministries functioning in different spaces, one church, different locations, uh, we could see multi-site engagement where uh, it's one church in the city but we gather in different spaces. We never want to lose that. It's a strength. Thirdly, the whole idea of mobilization, where God challenged us very deeply to look at our people in a different way and recognizing people are not just coming to the program of the church, the people are the program. And this is where we started to raise city changes, mobilizing people into their calling, their purpose as part of the mission to affect our world. We never want to lose that. The fourth key moment was multiplication. This is where we sense God challenge us uh, to take what we have been blessed with here in Pretoria and go bless other cities. It was from the story of the feeding of the 5,000. You will remember how they ate and then they had so much left and they picked up 12 baskets. And so the 12 city vision was birthed. Take what you have to 12 cities in the world. And for us now, that has become global cities, cities all over the world. Uh, the, the fifth key moment was our message. This actually happened in a crisis moment in our ministry when we felt that, you know, uh, we were being challenged with a, a deep financial crisis. But in the midst of that, we realized God was just getting our attention to make sure that Christ and the accomplished work of Christ and the message of, of grace where where we recognize we no longer perform for the acceptance of God, but God has made up His mind about us. This glorious good news gospel needs to be center in our communication. Recognizing that we are included, our identity and intimacy with God established in Christ, our message we never, ever, ever want to lose our message. What a glorious understanding, this Christ-centered reference that it's not do but done. <laughs> and then there was this moment where we were challenged to create from Doxadeo a movement. And we established the City Changes movement, which meant that we would serve beyond the Doxadeo family. And through the City Changes movement, we are now in 21 countries, busy engaging with leaders and churches in all of those countries. And, and whatever we've learned and, and, and what became reality for us, we are now downloading that into ministries all over the world and we're so grateful for all the partnerships that have now transpired in nations in Europe, in Australasia, in Africa, in, in the US, South America. Just amazing what's busy happening. We also uh, recognized in uh, 2015 as uh, we celebrated 20 years uh, that we were gearing up for a new season. And uh, in 2016, we announced Accelerate. This is where we said we're going to put our faith out there for, for a new thrust in more campuses, more impact through the different spheres of society, uh, and engaging more cities across the world. Amazing things have happened because somehow we stepped into that frequency that God stirred in our hearts to have faith for more. And uh, just recently, 
we recognized God was challenging us to a greater missional intentionality and uh, sharpening our focus to understand how to take faith, love, and hope, the glory of God manifested through these dimensions of faith, love, and hope to our world. And so we're gearing up for that. But it's in the midst of gearing up and getting ready to celebrate 25 years and, and, and take this thrust going forward that we were confronted with this pandemic. And uh, in the midst of this pandemic, we recognize there might be a ninth moment which we're going to call metamorphosis, metamorpho. <laughs> this means that literally things change in the way that we do things. The wine, everything that I've just communicated to you does not change, but the wine skin does. And so in the next season, we're trusting God for innovation and creativity and, and an understanding of, of how to move from, from certain paradigms of engagement, maybe even challenging some of the things that we have done in terms of just gathering and coming together and recognizing the sending and the engaging, the discipling of every individual in a new and fresh way. When you think about metamorphosis, the dictionary says it's a change of physical form, structure or substance, a striking alteration in appearance, character or circumstances, a marked and rather abrupt developmental change in the form of structure of something that we have experienced. And so as we gear up for 2021, we recognize that there is this wine and wineskin paradigm that we are navigating. And whatever the future holds, we're saying we're entering into this space knowing that we don't want to lose what we have become. These eight key moments have prepared us for this particular moment where we are trusting God that however we give expression to it, the glory of God, the doxa of Deo, will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. You see, this was the promise that established our identity as a ministry. Here from Habakkuk 2 verse 14, we see how the prophet communicates God's heart and, and he captures it in this verse saying, For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And so we've really come full circle. We're back to uh, the origin of our name. The doxa, meaning glory, of Deo, God. The glory of God. And um, we're trusting God that this will be a season where we're going to exhibit, make manifest the, the glory of God in fresh and new ways and in ways beyond what we've ever done before. And so we're extremely excited about this moment in our history. But you see, glory, when we speak about glory, it's, it, it's something that we become. We carry the glory of God in our lives. Um, when we speak about the glory of God, it's, it, it's not a part of God. It, it, it's who God is. This word glory in the King James Version we find 538 times. It's a repetitive theme right through Scripture, the glory of God. And, and God's glory really can be seen as His presence, His power, even His, His opinion, His, His proclamation over our lives, the capacity of God, the ability of God. And um, we recognize right through Scripture how the glory of God was manifested in different ways. In the Old Testament, uh, it was evident in the temple. 
That was the place where God was. His presence was there. But it was even within that context that they lived with this promise that the glory of God was not just going to be contained in the temple, but that it would fill all the earth. The knowledge of the glory of the Lord will fill the earth as the waters cover the sea. This is the promise of God. When we think about God's glory, we, we see it manifested in its clearest form in Jesus. Uh, when Jesus becomes flesh, John writes about him. He says in, in John 1.14, he says, And the Word became flesh, and He dwelt amongst us, and we beheld His glory, full of grace and truth. Well, Here's the wonder of this whole conversation is that God wants to share this very same glory that Jesus manifested here on earth with us so that we can manifest it on earth. You see, we were designed for glory. When Adam and Eve were the representatives of God in the garden, they were the carriers of glory. That Hebrew word for glory is the word kabot. It means weight. They were the ones that had weight. Wherever they went into creation, creation responded because creation recognized, here come the heavy ones. The ones that have weight. Uh, the joke goes, that's why the monkeys said to each other, he ain't my brother, he's too heavy. <laughs> You have to be a certain age to catch that one. But you see what happened to Adam and Eve is, is they had this weight. They were designed to carry the glory of God. And then what happened? They lost the glory because the Bible teaches us that's what happened when sin came. Romans 3 verse 23. For all have sinned and what? Fall short of the glory of God. That's what we lost. We lost His presence. We lost the sense of the weight, the kabot of God in our lives. And you know the sad thing is, because we were created for glory, if we do not have God's glory in our lives, we will try and establish our own glory. That's the way man functions. We seek to experience glory. And uh, there's this wonderful story in Daniel 5, in the Bible uh, about Belshazzar, uh, he was a king of Babylon. Uh, his father Nebuchadnezzar had conquered Israel and brought the Israelites over and, and, and also took some of the wealth out of the temple. And now during an extravagant feast where about a hundred of his lords were in attendance, Belshazzar is there and he chooses to toast to the gods using golden vessels that were brought from the temple in Jerusalem in open defiance against the God of Israel. And while he's there establishing his glory, he's the most powerful man in the world at that time. God shows up and God starts to write graffiti on the wall. Many, many tekel ifarsam. And then when it is explained to him what that means, God basically says, I have weighed you and you're too light. Ha. With all the glory, all the stuff that he thought was bringing glory to his life, God says, there's no weight. You see, because we can only have weight once we allow the glory of God to once again flood our own lives. And this is what happens to us in Christ. Jesus prays this in John 17 verse 22. He says, and the glory which you gave me, he says, I have given them. And now, now we have this privilege of taking to this world. As people who have become the recipients of the glory of God. To manifest this to our world. You know, 
we can only really give what we have. And uh, if we think about taking faith, love and hope to our world, these three concepts need to capture our own hearts. I so love the Hebrew writer. Actually, you know, when I, when I turned 21, uh, in those days you had a party where you invited the influential people in your life and uh, also invited your pastor. I remember inviting my pastor and, and they brought me a gift. And the gift they brought me was a commentary on the book of Hebrews written by Andrew Murray. It was in Afrikaans, and the Ailechdom was the title uh, in the most holy place. And uh, the book was, or the commentary was divided into two books, two volumes. And the reason for that was because Andrew Murray said, he said, you know, if you read the book of Hebrews, you see on the one hand all that the Hebrew writer wants us to understand about the Old Testament and the New Testament and how the Old was the shadow of the New and the implications of it now being, you know, the fullness in Christ. And it's this wonderful communication. But at some moment, there's a transition where it just goes from the implications to the application. And Andrew Murray breaks this Implication to application at Hebrews 10 verse 19. When he says, therefore, and you know when you read therefore, you always have to think, what is it therefore? Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter into the holy of holies by the blood of Jesus. By a new and living way, which he consecrated for us, be through the veil, that is his flesh, having a high priest over the house of God. Andrew Murray says, listen, this is the first implication that has application. We now have the liberty to come with boldness into the very holy place. The holy of holies. You see... He says we are challenged not to stay in the outer court which just represents the forgiveness of sins. Neither the holy place which focuses on the labor of the priesthood but the most holy place. The inner sanctum where there is an awareness of the presence of God. To think that we have boldness to enter into this place. That place which for a thousand five hundred years in the minds of the, the people of Israel, they were not allowed to access. They were afraid to go into that place. Suddenly, it all changes. The announcement is made. Come into this holy place. And as you enter into this holy place there is this revelation of faith love and hope because the hebrew writer goes on he says let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith and what is this faith having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and then he says, let us consider one another to stir up love and good works. The love of God manifested in our hearts from the holy place. And then he says, and let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering for he who promised is faithful. You see, there's something about a discovery of faith, love and hope. That which I am to take to the world. To manifest the glory of God. That first happens in my own life. Where I experience it becoming weight. The weight of God. The presence of God. Which I take to my world. This year. 2021. Is the year of exhibiting his glory may god give grace to everyone that is hearing this word that is journeying with us as a ministry that you would be the exhibitor 
of the glory of God. I end with Psalm 72, verse 18 and 19 that says, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous things. And then he says, Blessed be His glorious name forever. May the whole earth be filled with His glory. Amen and Amen. God bless you. Alan, thank you so very much. I want to encourage every person to stand up now and join us in a special anthem that was written by our worship leaders for today. now my privilege on behalf of the Doxado leadership to remind you that we are co-laborers with God. 
That's why we call you a partner of the mission of Christ. We are filled with the glory of God because of his promise, because of the gospel, because of the gift of Jesus Christ. And it reminds us of Isaiah 60 that says, Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. And kings will come to your light. We believe that God has put this mission of Jesus Christ in our hands. We are a family on mission. The mission of Jesus Christ, which is to bring faith to every person who is spiritually lost. This mission is to bring the love of Christ to the social pain of the people in our city. And this mission is to bring the hope of Christ to the quality of life in society. Dr. Deo, we are a family on mission. And may the glory of God be released through you and me like never before. We've spoken restoration, building the church, building a healthy church, bringing, bringing this church back to cities. being a, a role player within the context of this community. But we've never spoken to this. One by one, the leaders were confirmed in that, that God was speaking to our life. And you believe that it's about this. It could be possible. Doxideo, we are a family on mission. We trust God for His transforming presence to fill our cities. In Doxideo, we dream that the mission of Christ will be fulfilled through these three environments. Missional individuals, missional communities, and missional ecosystems. Exhibiting God's glory through faith, love, and hope. We see missional individuals who are passionate to share their faith and lead others to salvation in Jesus Christ. We see local churches as missional communities reaching out to the lost to find faith and become part of a spiritual family. And we also see many life-giving organizations taking hands to form a missional ecosystem in our city. compassionate individual with the heart of Jesus who live beyond themselves to show Christ's love to those in pain and suffering. We see the church as a caring community who effectively mobilize people to practically show love to those in need of their community. We see the unity of all the kingdom organizations working in unison to be the hands and feet of Christ in the city finding ways to bring healing love to the social pain of the city. We see passionate individuals who become city changers, living out the values of the kingdom of God as they become hope carriers in their world. We see the church as a source of real hope, being the faithful and fruitful agent of change to restore what is broken in their city. We see the power of the unity in the body of Christ rising up as a prophetic voice against injustice and darkness, restoring hope to all corners of our city. May the eternal promise that the knowledge of the glory of the Lord will cover the earth be fulfilled in our time. As we come to the end of our time together today, I would like to call you to a moment of surrender, a moment where we devote ourselves to the voice of God, to the word of God, to the vision of God, that he wants to exhibit his glory through us in our world. You will receive a wristband at your campus and I want to encourage you to take it, take it even now, or take it and put it on and let's wear it for the next season as we declare every single day 
that He will exhibit His glory through us. Let us end our time together and pray, Heavenly Father, we thank You that You empowered us through Your Holy Spirit to be carriers of the glory of God, to be carriers of the love of God, to be carriers of the voice of God in our world. And today we say, yes, Lord. We say yes and we thank you that you will be with us as we reach out to the people around us. May the glory of our Father, the glorious presence, the impact and the power of God be experienced in our world because you are in us and because you are with us. And today we declare that to God be the glory. It is the doxa of Deo, the glory of God that is over our lives and it fills the earth everywhere we go. We pray that in the mighty name of Jesus and we all agree as we say Amen and Amen.